Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here with an intro to homogeneous linear equations with constant coefficients, second order differential equations, where our functions a, b, and c in this linear homogeneous form are actually constants. If these are constants, we know they have no y's in them, so this is also a linear equation, and the fact that it's equal to zero is the part that makes it a homogeneous equation. When we first started off in our series, our first method we learned to find the solution to a differential equation that is second order was reduction of order. Reduction order is a sort of long method. We want to see if we can find some more abbreviated methods to solve some different types of problems that we're going to see with second order equations. So if we just look at the format of this equation and we try to imagine what a solution might look like. So we have some constant multiple of y double prime and y prime and y all adding up to equal zero. So some good intuition with something like this might be to say, well, what is some function? What is a y where its derivative and second derivative, those are all just constant multiples of the original function. And if you think about functions where you take a derivative of it, you just get a constant multiple of that same function. You might soon stumble on the idea of our y being some exponential function. That's a possibility, right? If y was e to some multiple of x, then when I take the derivative, the chain rule just says that that constant multiple is going to multiply on the outside. So when I take the derivative and then the second derivative, I would just be getting constant multiples of this original e to the mx, right? So let's just say, what if y equals e to the mx was a solution for this, right? So y equals e to the mx, that would give us something to put in here. And then we would need y prime and y double prime, right? So we said y prime, the m is going to come out from the chain rule, we'll just get m e to the mx. The y double prime, another m is going to come out, right? We'll just get another constant multiple, so we'll get m squared e to the mx. So that'll give us replacement for that and that. We could go ahead and just put all that in there, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So this equation would then look like what? It would look like a times m squared e to the mx, if we put in y double prime, plus by prime would be plus bm e to the mx, plus cy, which would be ce to the mx, is equal to zero, and notice that they all have this exponential in common, right? Let's go ahead and factor that out. So we'll say e to the mx times the quantity. What do we get? We get am squared plus bm plus c, that quantity equal to zero. So product property for zero says, how do I multiply two things and get zero? Well, one of these two things, or both of them, could be zero, and that would give me an answer, right? The thing is, e to the mx is not something that can ever be zero. So this is never zero. So the only way for this to be zero is if this expression equals zero, right? So this says we would get e to the mx being an answer if am squared plus bm plus c is equal to zero. So here's what that says. That says we can take the second order equation with constant coefficients in front of each of the y terms, y, y prime, y double prime. We can think of this as a quadratic equation algebraically just in terms of m. Solve this easy algebra equation here. And then once we get solutions for m, we know that exponentials e to the mx are going to be solutions. And this algebraic equation that we solve right here that helps us solve the second order differential equation, this is actually called the characteristic polynomial for our differential equation. Let's look at an example here. So I have y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y equals 0. So this is linear, homogeneous, it has constant coefficients. Here a is 1 and b is 3 and c is 2, right? So what we just figured out tells us that if I can solve m squared plus 3m plus 2 equals 0, then I should be able to find the answer for this equation. Now this is easy, right? This actually factors quite nicely. I get something like m plus 1 times m plus 2 when I factor this. And if we set each factor equal to zero, right, we'll get m plus one equals zero and m plus two is equal to zero. Then we'll get that m is negative one and m is negative two, right, for this algebraic equation. Now remember what that told us, right? That told us then that y equals e to the mx is going to be a solution. 
So this here then tells us that y equals e to the negative x is a solution for this equation. It also tells us that y equals e to the negative 2x is a solution because we got m is negative 1 and m is negative 2. And remember that the general solution for this differential equation will just be some linear combination of both of these, right? So our general solution is going to be some constant multiple of one of these functions from the fundamental set of solutions plus some constant multiple of the other function from the fundamental set of solutions. So you can see just by knowing how to solve equations from algebra, we're actually able to solve a homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients by changing it into a quadratic equation and solving for m. Now it turns out there's just a little bit more to it than that. When we solve our characteristic polynomial, our am squared plus bm plus c equals zero, we solve that for m. There are three possibilities for us getting solutions for m. The first possibility, like the one we just did, was when the values for m are real numbers and they are not the same, they are distinct. So if we get m is negative 1 and negative 2, or negative 3 and 6, or 0 and 5, those will be very straightforward, just like the example we just did. We have a video coming up with more examples of these if you want to see that. The next case is when we just get one solution for m. We call those values for m real and repeated. If you think back to algebra and parabolas, that's when the vertex of your parabola was right on the axis, and so you only got one solution for your parabola there. We called that the root having multiplicity 2. So when we get an m value where there's a multiplicity of 2, then that's what we call real and repeated roots. And then the last case for m is that we get some complex number. We use the quadratic formula or completing the square, and we get some real part and some imaginary part, and we call those complex conjugates. So there are three different cases here. We have example videos for each type. We have a video on each type coming up in our differential equation series. Check each of those out for more information on how to solve all of these. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in those videos.